in the previous video we saw what equivalent fractions are so in this video we are going to learn about reducing a fraction to its lowest terms for example 14 upon 20 so how can we rewrite 14 upon 20 such that we have the smallest numerators and smallest denominators and 14 upon 20 and that new fraction are equal so what are we going to do is we are going to uh, divide 14 and divide 20 by a certain number so let us say we divide 14 by 2 then we also need to divide 20 by 2 remember we can multiply or we can divide both the numerators and denominators but not by 0 not by 0 we cannot multiply or divide 0 so what is 14 divided by 2 it's 7 and 20 divided by 2 is 10 and 7 and 10 they are co-prime numbers remember co-prime numbers that we had studied in the previous sections and since 7 and 10 they both only go in the table of 1 they cannot be further divided so this is the reduced form of 14 upon 20 which is 7 upon 10 and 14 upon 20 and 7 upon 10 are the same numbers same fractions we can also do the same thing in this way we know 14 and 20 go in the table of 2 so we can cancel this and we can write 2 7s are 14 and 2 10s are 20 and since now they cannot be further subdivided we can write this as 7 upon 10 let us take another example 60 over 100 so we can divide 60 by 2 and 100 also by 2 so we get 30 upon 50 and then we can further divide 30 and 50 by 2 because both of them go in the table of 2 so we'll have uh, 15 twos are 13 so we have 15 and 50 divided by 2 is 25 now 15 and 25 do not go in the table of 2 but they both go in the table of 5 so we can further divide both the numerators and the denominators by 5 so we have 15 divided by 5 is 3 and 25 divided by 5 is 5 so 60 upon 100 is the same as 3 upon 5 and another way of doing the same thing 60 upon 100 we can divide both the numbers by let's say directly 10 so 10 6 are 60 and 10 10 are 100 and then by 2 so we have 2 3 are 6 and 2 5 are 10 another shorter way to do the same thing is by cancelling the zeros so 0 and 0 gets cancelled and this is another way of saying that we are dividing both these numbers by 10 and then we have two threes are and we have two fives are let us do another example 12 divided by 36 we know both the numbers numerators and denominators go in the table of 2 so 12 divided by 2 over 36 divided by 2 we have 12 divided by 2 is 6 and 36 divided by 2 is 18 and we know both these numbers go in the table of 6 directly we know so we can divide directly 6 it's not necessary to always divide by 2 or 3 or any prime number so 6 divided by 6 is 1 and 18 divided by 6 is 3 so we could also directly do this as follows we know 12 ones are is 12 and 12 threes are is 36 so 1 upon 3 is the reduced form of 12 over 36 now let's divide 108 upon 60 to the lowest terms so we can start with the table of 2 we can say that 2 30s are 60 and 2 5s are 10 and 2 4s are 8 then again these two numbers they go in the table of 2 so we know 2 15s are 30 and 
two twos of four, one carry, and two sevens of fourteen. And then fifteen and twenty-seven, they do not go in the table of two. They go in the table of three. So three fives are fifteen. Three nines are twenty-seven. And then nine upon five, since nine and five are co-prime numbers, they uh, do not go in any other table except one. So the final answer is nine upon five. Now, if you look carefully, the original fraction was hundred and eight upon sixty, and its equivalent fraction to the reduced term is nine upon five. So we could have divided. Hundred and eight by twelve directly, and sixty also when divided by twelve would have given us five. So it is observed that the HCF of hundred and eight and sixty is twelve. So twelve is the number is the biggest possible number which goes in the table of hundred and eight as well as sixty. So the concept of HCF is very useful in this case. Let's do another example. Two hundred and sixteen over eighty-eight. We know both these numbers are even numbers, and therefore both these numbers go in the table of two. So two fours are eight. Two fours are eight. So two forty-fours are eighty-eight. And over here, two ones are two. And two eights are sixteen. Now this is actually wrong. Why is it wrong? Because eighteen multiplied by two is thirty-six, and not two hundred and sixteen. So a silly mistake that we did over here was when two hundred and sixteen is divided by two, we write two ones are two, we write a zero, and then we just bring down the one. We do not bring down sixteen together. We just bring down one digit at a time, so we should have written two zeros are zero, one minus zero is one, and then bring down the six, and then two eights are sixteen. So it is wrong to write eighteen directly. This is the common silly mistake that most of the students do. So we should have written one hundred and eight. So it's one hundred and eight over forty-four. Again, hundred and eight and forty-four, they both are even numbers, so they go in the table of two. So we have two twenty-twos are forty-four, and over here two fives are ten, and two fours are eight. Still, four and two both go in the table of two, so two elevens are twenty-two. Two twos are four, one carry. Two sevens are forty. And finally, twenty-seven and eleven are co-prime numbers, so we have twenty-seven upon eleven as the reduced term of two hundred and sixteen over eighty-eight. Practice more and more such sums. Thank you for watching.